Perfect. Okay, it's five o'clock, Mark. And uh, I'd like to call the September 2021 Airport Commission to order. Um, Mark, could you um, do a roll call and see who's on the call tonight? Sure. Uh, Michelle Bond? Here. Gurdeep Brar? Here. Robert Burke? Robert Burke? I don't see Robert. Luke Fazard? Here. John Halleck is here. David Lorman? Here. And Kevin Munson? Here. Great. Sounds so like six you. present and a few guests. Great. Sounds and like Robert, uh, I, I was in a meeting with Robert two hours ago, so I, I, I'm I, sure he'll, I would, I would think that he'll show up. Okay. All right, great. Um, so with that, um, let's uh, proof of posting. Do we have a proper posting for the meeting? Yes, it's posted at City Hall. Um, Cara, was it on the, on the door at the uh, airport? Do you know? Um, oh. I was not actually in there today, so I can't uh, confirm well, that. They, okay. I don't think they've ever not posted it. So I, yeah. I would imagine okay. it's not required to be posted there, but we do that as a courtesy. Uh, okay. City's okay. website, and then of course, distributed by our listserv. Okay, perfect. All right, first item of business then would be the approval of the minutes. I'll give everybody an opportunity to review them and uh, to make a motion. Yeah, I okay. Luke is about to make that motion, so I can second it or the other way around. Yes. Yes, you knew you know me too well, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would but make a motion to approve the minutes from August fifth. I okay. second it. Okay, so we have a motion um, from Luke and a second from the mayor. Does uh, anybody have any comments? or discussion items? If not, I'd like to call a vote for approval of the minutes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Okay, they are approved. Next item of business is the, um, the um, chair report. Um, the only uh, thing that I have to discuss that we're not going to discuss is we did get a um, communication from one of the hangar owners who uh, had asked, um, Spectrum to uh, install internet and they said they couldn't do it without our approval, which was good because um, we told them last time they had to present a plan to do the entire airport. Um, after that, I called TDS because they do have the infrastructure at the airport and they um, told me or confirmed to me by email that anybody at the airport can get 50 gigabit uh, 50 megabits per second. Um, so there is a, a internet available on, on the airport. And also I have a neighbor of mine who has Starlink, which I've never seen before. I know Elon Musk was putting the satellites up there um, and he's getting about 200 megabits per second unlimited usage uh, for about $100 a month. So all the hangar owners have some form of access to the internet, phone, and video, although it may not be the vendor of their choice. And uh, we certainly will entertain um, TDS um, adding the infrastructure if they choose to do so. So I want to pass that on to everybody, uh, what we found out with that. Um, if there's any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer right now. John, is there a Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Sorry. Ray. Good job, John. Okay, yeah. Luke. I was just going to say, is there a desire for faster internet than what you just described in the options available, or is it um, merely an act, merely an access issue? I, I think it's really just an access issue. Okay. Um, I can't believe that anybody. First of all, fifty megabits per second is pretty fast. Two hundred megabits per second and above, no one can detect the difference. So I think there are two viable options. And the price point is pretty reasonable when you're looking at 200 megabits per second for unlimited usage for $100. That's not too bad. Um, it may not be the cheapest thing on the block, but it isn't like they can't get it if they if they don't want it, right? I mean, that's the way utilities are. I mean, we have people that have a territory, and you know, we, we use what we got. So anyway, so that's. That's my take on it. Do you have a comment on that? I mean, your thoughts? 
No, no, I was just, I was just curious. I had the same reaction, which was the, 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 that seemed decent options to me, but I didn't know if that was how that was being received by the hangar owners. Um, I don't know yet because I, you know, they, I, I gave them copies of everything that I had done and copies of all the emails um, to explore independently. And so um, I haven't heard back. So it, they, they do know that they have accessibility and if there's something not happy with, I know this is not a shy group <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll hear from them. So um, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll just leave it at that for now and wait to hear back. Okay, so with that, let's move to the airport manager's report. So Car, are you giving that? Yep, I'm getting that. And um, if Rich joins us, he can fill in anything that I can't answer. So okay. the airport manager's report for today, August 5th with the neighbor relations uh, for Friday, July 30th to August 25th, mm -hmm. 2021, there were 26 noise or overflight complaints, which was down from 71 in July. Of these complaints, 12 were from one individual and four from another. 17 reports were made using the city online reporting form, two via the city email and six via the phone and one uh, snail mail letter. Again, upon investigation, the vast majority of those reports were for aircraft following the voluntary noise abatement pattern. Several reports were for aircraft using the grass runway and landing to the north. Several more for aircraft following the FAA standard pattern rather than our voluntary noise abatement procedure. Rock the Ramp and the Associated Air Show generated the letter requesting that homeowners in the area be notified in advance of any further um, future air shows or fireworks. And Rich's understanding is that the town of Middleton was requested to send that information. All reports which requested contact were addressed by either email or phone call by the airport manager. Airport safety, there were no aircraft accidents or incidents on the field. One, per, one in-person safety seminar was hosted by Capital Flight and the subject was meteorology. One in-person safety seminar was hosted by Mori Airplane Company. The subjects were runway safety and communicating effectively with air traffic control. And these may be the last in-person seminars until the COVID-19 situation improves, unfortunately. Rebecca the whole. Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> um, airport maintenance. Okay, runway 1028 was closed all day August 3rd for repair of two small sinkholes due to the uh, water crossing underneath the airport. And the next two items, I think Mark Opitz is going to be addressing, but the around the AED um, being ordered and also the Knox boxes. Uh, I believe Mark has that one. Yeah. So I, okay, correct. So when Mark reports, we can add to that. Okay. Um, then the goats have arrived and are busy at work eating the brush along the North Fork of the Pheasant Branch Creek waterway. I can add a little bit on that now or wait till the end of the report. We'll wait for the report. Okay, great. So other news is on August 14th, Capital Flight hosted a cruise in car show as well as it was really well attended and very well organized. August 18th through 20, uh, Mori Airplane Company hosted a girls aviation camp. Regarding wildlife, um, two pairs of sandhill cranes have now been reported last month and they continue to forage on the airport property. And regarding future events, uh, Mori Airplane Company will be hosting a Women in Aviation Day on September 26th. And this is an all day event with attendance in the 30 to 50 uh, people range. And then to note that if the COVID-19 situation deteriorates further, the live event will be canceled. Okay. Um, Richard Mori will present a virtual seminar on winter flying the evening of September 30th. And we have a, another edition to future events on September 4th from 9 a.m. to noon, Chapter 93 is holding is hosting a Young Eagles uh, event for women. Okay. That completes the airport manager's report. Mark, could you fill in then on the AED and the Knox boxes? Sure. Um, the AED and the wall cabinet have arrived at okay. the um, at the airport, or I mean, at, they arrived to the EMS, okay. and they had a, the cabinet had a significant delay with the delivery, and so that's why it's taken so long. Okay. Uh, Steve Wunsch wrote to me last week or two weeks ago now, our EMS director, 
that he needs to finish setting it up and then he'll bring it over to the airport. He had said he would do that no later than, um, I guess that would have been last Thursday, but he was gonna be on vacation after that. So I'm not sure if that actually happened. And based on what Rich wrote in his report, it sounds like it hasn't happened. So it will, it will happen after Steve gets back from vacation, which is um, mid-September. Okay. That's and the AED. The Knox boxes. That Knox boxes. Um, we're trying to figure out with Steve gone, it's, it's not sure what happened, but we had asked Steve for that help with that in April. Okay. And it's not clear that he actually ordered them. Um, okay. And I don't know that for a fact. So I need to find that out. But he's been on vacation now since I discovered that that little gap in communication somewhere somewhere that happened so we're not quite sure what the status of that is i will send you a written i'll send you an email when he gets back okay. from from uh, when he gets back to the office this all of this is on the city side I'm right sure that you'll just shepherd it through and make sure it gets completed yeah what i will say is that uh about the knox boxes is we um i went back and looked at the communications mike had tried to order them mike davis Mm -hmm. And um, and it said that um, in the course of going through it, he needed EMS's help. And so he wrote to Steve back in April about that. And I don't know that I was copied on correspondence after that, but I, okay. to be honest, didn't dig into it because I've had computer problems for the last week. So I haven't, so I'm behind. I didn't research that. Okay. Um, but my computer got fixed a few hours ago, just in time for this meeting. <laughs> okay. Well, when you get a, when you, you know, have a spare moment, I know you had the Good Neighbor Festival and all those activities. Oh, I took my own time for that, just to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't work time. Yeah, put it, yeah, put it, put it where it goes. So, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I mean, I took time off to, to work on that. Just, so that's why I've been, yeah. I mean, that's, okay. that's a no problem. problem. I know you'll, you'll follow up on it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Next um, item. And, and I wanted to make one clarification uh, to the to Rich's report. Yes. Um, let me go find it again. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize I had that on the screen. Mm -hmm. no um, Rich wrote in here that uh, regarding Rock the Ramp and the Associate Air Show generated the letter requesting that homeowners be notified. I actually don't know exactly which letter he's referring to, mm -hmm. but um, the way he wrote this implies that that the town was requested to send information to via letter or possibly, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that that was not an expectation that we ever had. What we did ask, what I did ask was for the town's help to use their listserv to provide notice about the air show and the fireworks, but there was never any um, le uh, formal letter to property owners in the area. I, I, it doesn't I say that specifically, but I, I wanted to make sure it wasn't I, I can clarify to... that, Mark, okay. because that was a, a snail mail letter that was received at the airport with that complaint. What Rich is referring to is, is his understanding is that the town of Middleton was going to let the town of Middleton residents know that this was going on, whether it's the listserv or not. It was not um, sent out to them, but however, the town of Middleton normally right. notifies the residents of something. And, and they weren't you know, they weren't required to do that. It was a city approved event, but I did ask for the town's help in using right. their listserv since they use their listserv to publicize airport matters frequently. Right, um, right. And so that um, is, I think what the, what he was referring to. Correct. So I just wanted to clarify for the record. Okay, no problem. So anyway, when we, uh, we we're not really gonna talk about next year's uh, capital flight events because we, we really didn't get all the information we needed for this specific meeting, but you know, I, from what I understand, um, we probably would do uh, justice to the community to maybe do some advertising to the general public anyhow, um, you know, from the, uh, from the town city. So hopefully everybody will, 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 will be aware of what's going on. Great, all right, well, thank you. Um, next item, Mark, is we're gonna talk about finances. Okay, so yeah. there's, really not much um so this is can we go to the budget the one that i uh, that sure. i keep going sure. to the one with the call there you go this is the easiest one for me to to deal with and, and i just want to point out that uh alder burke has joined the meeting in case you hadn't noticed okay he joined I, the meeting under under the chair report okay great thank you um so the um green highlighted is the budget as was submitted 
So you have, um, I think the three, the two columns that precede it are, uh, provide some context for what was actually submitted. So um, for the first one, it's a fairly well-known item and that's the hangar leases. They don't change year to year, only every five. The MADC land lease does escalate on an annual basis. And uh, you can see that number. The fuel flowage field is actually, I think a little low at 6,000. Um, our run rate for the last 12 months is 8,600. Um, and hopefully it'll, it'll stay up in that range. So we're really ahead of kind of where we plan to be. So that's good always to have income estimated low and come in high, that, we like that. Uh, the crop land rent is a known number, um, as is solar land rent. You can see we have another $10,000 um, increase in that. So that's uh, all the, the, the line items that we have. The grants and that we'll talk about when we talk about cap, capital projects. Um, going down to the expenses, um, we have the telephone, which is a known number. Utilities is a known number. Insurance is a known number, and those uh, match the the twelve month run rate. The airport grounds maintenance is below, um, and that's because in 2020 and 2021 we had major capital expenses for our equipment. In 2020, we had an engine. We had to totally replace a third party um, for one of the snowplow trucks. But then last year, in the old snow equipment. Um, we had a, uh, or excuse me, in, 20, uh, in 2021, we had a um, hydraulic pump system go out of the New Holland, and we're pretty much riding on all new new equipment, but we kept the number at 35,000, um, knowing that we had this uh, 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 bank remediation and brush and some other things. So, you know, we weren't really sure where that will come at. So we maintained the air, uh, airport grounds maintenance at a consistent number. Uh, prairie maintenance is a, we get levied by the city. That's fairly much a known number. Um, we decreased um, or maintained, excuse me, the landing light maintenance at $2,000. The run rate was 1900. I expect it's gonna be hopefully nothing because we're putting in brand new lights. And so hopefully, you know, there's hopefully there's a warranty in that, but uh, we will see. Um, the airport manager's contract um, uh, is a modest increase. Just to remind everybody, the airport grounds maintenance is the parts that goes into all of our equipment plus any third party costs, such as snow plowing, the goats, whatever. The airport manager's contract, however, includes not just the airport manager, it's also all the mowing and all the labor to fix the equipment, uh, less the parts. So it's, it's a lot more than just airport richest time. Richest time is just a really minor component of that. Um, outside services is legal. Um, I don't think we have much other under that category. <clears throat> Our run rate for the last year was $10,000. We estimated 22, we maintain that, um, so we have a margin there. Entitlement match, we did not have any for 21 and 20, but we start again in 22, and that's $8,034. Um, we didn't have any operating expense. Um, we um, just carried forward the estimate. And the capital outlay at the time of the budget, we estimated at 100,000, which we previously approved. Um, and as I'll show you later, um, it's actually nothing. Um, so you could take the $100,000 back and we never used the contingency, although we had kept it in. So if you subtract 110,000 from the uses, you end up with about 140. So we're to the good, um, you know, a few thousand dollars. So the budget balances and provides a minor surplus. And this is what was uh, worked on by Rich, uh, Mark and myself and submitted um, to the um, Common Council um, in, in different form. This is my, my easy to read form. Specifically was submitted to the finance staff. It's not gone to the council yet. Uh, they're packaging everything together, all the budget requests that, and then that will go to the council. Okay. 
So uh, at this point, could, does anybody have any question about any of these line items or how we derive the numbers? What can I what can I tell you that I haven't told you already? Hey, John, our chairman. Yes. Yep, Kevin here. We I think you know after we get done with this, I think we need to go back to the airport manager's report, and I think Kara wanted to add a summary. Is that right? I just wanted to mention that before we forget about it. I'm, I may be be mistaken. Uh, yeah, Kara wanted to. Um, she was going to add uh, on the brush which is a, a, an item that we haven't got to yet, but I don't think there was anything else. Was there, Kara? She's you, muted. You it, muted. It, it's later on the agenda, Kevin. It's, yeah, it's gonna be I'll discussed. talk about it later. Yeah. Okay, but okay, thanks, thanks for bringing that up. So, if there's so no, go ahead. So Jared. John, for the lighting, uh, it's gonna be a million dollar now for LED lights. So I see that uh, at some places, $500,000, item so but uh, do we need to include this one or we just take it for granted that uh, so here, it will give us the money so here's where a little bit of the confusion comes this report is really our enterprise fund this is this is the airport checkbook okay there are items that do that are paid for that are not on this report which is our capital projects which are funded by the Bureau of Aeronautics and the, um, the FAA. Uh, Bill puts it on here. I don't, I'm not sure I know why, but they really never, the money never goes in and out of our checkbook. They're really handled in different accounts. And, and I'll explain those to you when we get. So we really never spend $400,000 out of this checkbook. And we really never get $100,000 out of this checkbook. And those are our, They'll, those are handled in other accounts. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. Okay, Mark, why don't we go down to the, what I got from, the, this is the actual worksheets that, that Mark uses. With oh, they're garbled together, sorry. Yeah, not a problem. So the, all of this is what oh. I just talked about. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, these are in the right order. What you had, We had skipped something at the beginning. What was... Oh, I see. This was just the uh, airport financials, the, the monthly report. Yeah, and there's yeah. really no drama there. Right, right, exactly. So your sheet was the first budget sheet. Okay, I, I had misunderstood something you said. So yes, okay. these are the, these are the, this is the format of what we are asked to turn in. Yeah. Uh, this is what I was, I'm given by our finance team. And then this is what he, what John, what the chairman just mentioned is, is translated into this, into these documents here, which, you know, we can go through those, but you had them in your packet for, yeah, for they, review. They reflect the same information. Right. It's just the form that the city uses in amalgamating all of the different budgets. Right. So, Thanks. and then anything that is uh, represents a change from, from the previous year's budget then is called a decision item, regardless of whether it's an increase or a decrease. And so that's what this table shows. And then uh, and then here's the just, and then this is the capital uh, budget item. We only have this one item listed in here, and that's the uh, mayor. That's what you were referring to about the million dollar project. Um, yeah. It actually could end up being a little bit more. And I know that Josh Holbrook's on the line. I don't know, John, if you had planned to, or if Josh, yeah, if you had anything. Let's go through the numbers that. that I have with Josh, and then I'll ask Josh to, to straighten me out if I'm wrong. Okay. All right. So if we can move, okay, so this is the capital projects, if you will. So this is not really from the um, airport fund. This is fund differently. So we have yearly entitlements that we accrue every year and we have a beginning balance of uh, 399,000. So that is kept with the Bureau of Aeronautics. We have two active projects one is the airport lighting uh, design and build. And the other one is some cracks that are in our taxiway. So the cracks that we had in the runway are already filled. So the money comes out of this in a couple of ways. One is what the BOA gives us, but then we do a local match, which is that $8,334 that we provide every year. So the crack filling will be done this year 
um, and the engineering for the lighting project will come uh, this year, but the work will be coming next year. So if you, uh, the next year in our budget, so that, so that $100,000, $400,000 that was in Bill's old sheet, that's was related to this lighting project that didn't materialize, okay? So if you go down to what we're gonna do in 2022, we're gonna use whatever entitlements we had left over, plus the, sit, the state is going to provide us 836,000, plus we're gonna provide a match of 3,500. That whole project is 1,120,000 for the work, and $75,000 for the engineering. So it comes in at about 1.2 million for all the runway lights, taxiway lights, and the engineering. Uh, the good news for us is that um, our cost is really the um, local match, if you will. So we have, um, rather than $100,000 that we have allocated, um, it looks like about $3,500 for 2022 and 6787 for 2021. Does that make sense? Excellent, so these are John. Capital projects and then this is the funding sources and, and the costs. Josh, if you're on the line, if you want to um, clarify anything <laughs> I said that's wrong, and I'm sure there is something somewhere. <laughs> this no. is... No, I think you actually, uh, you got it right. The, yeah, you're getting about a $1.2 million lighting project for, um, let's just call it 10 grand. Yes. Um, the, the only hiccup in that could be that you set $836,000 on John's list there. Um, that depends on which, which year we take it out of. I think you're going to get 2020 money, which is 100% federal. So you won't owe anything on that. So I think I had actually talked to Mark at one time and I said, you're going to owe somewhere between 10 and 70. Uh -huh. um, I have the paperwork in route to give you the best. So you'd only owe the 10. It hasn't yeah. come back yet. And I'm not, I'm not promising anything until I have a signature. <laughs> okay. No, I understand the, um, anytime we deal with the FAA and all of that, um, everything is by the day, if not by the hour. So we, we have allocated, uh, approved $100,000. We hope we don't have to use the 100,000. I like the 10,000 much better because we may at some point in time, if we talk about a little later in the fuel migration plan, gonna need something, you know, some equipment and it's gonna have to be paid for if we have no entitlements and, uh, and there's no funding available from the government, it's gonna have to come out of pocket. And so um, as much money as we can preserve there, the better off we are. Yeah, and John too, I think your crack filling will come in less than $60,000. Um, I just don't know that number yet. Uh, 45 would be probably more in line, okay. but I budgeted 60 just in case. You know, expenses high, uh, income low. Yeah. We'll always be satisfied. I, I can't say enough, Josh, about how, hard you work on our behalf to get funding for these projects and i just can't thank you enough you know no problem your, your pleasure no. and i would say thank you john and josh as well so i joined john thanking you so mm -hmm. thank no problem all right thank you so much does anybody have any questions of myself or josh regarding these items sorry josh you may have said this but when will we know about whether we're able to use the 2020 money um, I've submitted the paperwork. It's working its way through the governor. Um, that's usually about a four to six week process. Um, if it hasn't been changed by now, it's looking good. Okay. Uh, but like I said, when the, when it's, when it's wet on the paper, I'll, I'll rejoice. Right. So <laughs> hopefully by the next, uh, airport commission meeting, we'll, we'll know the answer. Correct. And just so you know, I, everyone knows I did send out the contract today for the crack filling. So that is going to happen this year, probably next month. Got yeah. it. Yeah, we, we not only did we, uh, when we fixed the two, um, two holes in the runway, there was also a section of the taxiway that was uh, sagged and the snowplow was uh, catching. And we went ahead and fixed that too when we fixed the two um, that we fixed the two 
potholes. And I think that cost was about $3,500, uh, 4,000 in the aggregate. And that'll just come out of the maintenance budget. So I think we're doing okay, folks. I mean, we're, we're holding our own. We're building some balances. Um, we're getting our airport into good shape, our equipment in good shape. Uh, we're a lot better than we were a couple of years ago. Thank you, John. Great job. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Um, with that, let's go to the next item for discussion. Mark? Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about the unleaded fuel migration plan. I sent this out a couple of days ago. Obviously there's a focal point uh, or epicenter on the unleaded fuel debate. I mean, there are new, f new fuels coming to market. Um, there are airports that are making changes. There are public debates. Um, on both sides are people uh, developing reports. One says yes, one says no. Um, you know, and, and my, my, my point I think the we would be best served and the community would be best served if we just don't engage in the debate and rather focus on how are we going to make a change? Because that's, you know, you can waste a lot of cycles and a lot of money trying to prove who's got the best uh, consultants. So, you know, my, my suggestion to us is, you know, I'm not going to agree to anybody's re report. I don't want to engage in the debate. I will say lead's not good. Pollu pollution's not good. <laughs> and we should do what we can. And so since we have some possible fuels that we can do, um, we might develop a, uh, a mitigation or a, a, a plan to adopt the new fuels. And so um, I had talked with Rich about a couple of things. Today we have a 12,000 gallon jet A tank and we have a 10,000 gallon low lead tank. Um, we could add a third tank, could be 12,000 gallon, um, it could be smaller. You know, I think we need to determine that. I have a list of all of the aircraft on the field and um, against that list, I'm gonna go uh, against every one and see which one could use the 94 Swift fuel, and which ones could use the G100 uh, fuel. So we should look and see what that is and make a determination. After I do that research, I'll bring that back to the airport commission next month and we could discuss you know, more specifics on what we should do and then we can get a price of that. Um, the unleaded Fred uh, is not fully approved, um, but when it is, we would transition all of them 100 low lead to the unleaded fuel, okay? There's also a recent article that I uh, provided. Um, I just made a comment that I would prefer the G100 over the 94 US because it's a ASTM drop-in replacement. You can mix the two and they're, they're, they're essentially the same thing. And that would just allow for uh, simplicity. You know, we don't have people trying to use the wrong pump handle and put the wrong fuel in the wrong aircraft and the supply chain would be easier. Uh, we could make larger quantities and we could get it all at once. Um, so, I mean, the, to me, a major point um, is the, um, would be to get that uh, in quantity. Um, Kevin Munson and myself have both been talking to Gammy, who is the owner of the SDC and they are the uh, engineering front end for the fuel. And um, there's in that article is some uh, information about that. They think that all of the aircraft uh, will be approved for the G100 uh, sometime the first of the second quarter of 2022. All of the STC paperwork is done. The FAA has to take the paperwork and go through their, whatever the government does to get their seal of approval. So it's with the government right now. The 94 is available. And again, I'll inventory the airplanes on the field to determine what can be used. The supply chain is not there for the G100. If we wanted to use say 30 or 40,000 gallons 
they would have to deliver it in one twelfth over the year in small amounts and the shipping would be atrocious and it would just wouldn't be something that would be uh, financially re reliable to do. So we may have to go to the 94 UL um, and we'll figure out how much that is. And then we'll, we'll make a determination as the equipment. Um, so I have the list. I want to contact the owners to see um, how much they use and if they'd be willing to buy the fuel at a premium. <clears throat> uh, GAMI originally had a two, mil two million gallon contract with Emory Riddle and Emory Riddle canceled the contract because they didn't think that, they, that the student's tuition could be raised enough to fund the additional costs. So, we have, you know, we have fuels here um, and people have a choice and um, they will, they may continue to use the low lead even though they should use the other up until the point the EPA revokes the dispensation to the FAA and says, that's it. Uh, you can no longer use 100 low lead. And, the, and none of the refineries at this point are willing to, to dismantle their low lead manufacturing until they're assured that this is the way that the market's going to go. So you, you've got market dynamics at play there also. But I think we need to start moving down this path. Um, we need to decide the size of our tanks. Um, we need to get some quotes um, and um, try to determine our timing for the projects. We need to get our engineering. Um, secure whatever funding we do. We need bids, construction. And I say, you know, let's get, let's get on the path and start walking down that path to, um, to, to make the transition. So- John, a quick, quick question for the notes. Um, first of all, how do you spell GAMI? G-A-M-I. Oh, that's right. And then uh, STC, what did you mean by STCs for all aircraft? The middle type certificate. See, an airplane what? comes with a, the airplane, when you make an airplane, it comes with a birth certificate. It's called a type certificate. You can't change anything on the type certificate. Only the FAA can do it. And they do the process to do that is the supplemental type certificate. Thank you. So the supplemental type certificate says that they can use these other fuels. Uh, chairman, yes. a real quick statement. So, yes. you know, having spoken with GAMI and all the, the engineers there, it's, it's important to know that this uh, G100, one, it's 100 non-leaded, has the testing, as you mentioned, has been completed. They used a design of experiment, a matrix approach, because it's, and, I, and this was all new to me, that it was more than just the engine that it impacts. It's the fuel configuration. Is it gravity fed? Is it is it fed with fuel pumps? Is it uh, turbo normalized? Is it turbocharged? Is it non-turbocharged? So they had to go through this design of experiment. They've completed all this and they found out, hey, surprise, uh, the, the fuel seems to be much better for the engines and extends, extends the TBOs. And that's the time between overhauls. What they're working on now, the big issue is logistics. And they, uh, uh, if you've been keeping up with recent events, there's some studies that have been coming out and, you know, the, the EPA, the FDA, or the FAA, the pilots, everybody wants to really expedite this process, but GAMI was on a certain timeline and they're trying to adapt to that. So most probably whether GAMI uh, or AvFuel or whoever uh, fracks this fuel, uh, manufactures this fuel, it, <clears throat> it'll... I'm sure it'll go in sooner than later, and th this will be the fuel of choice. And I just wanted to point that out that um, the the organizations and companies that are working on this never imagined that they'd have to accelerate the timelines the way they're being asked to, whether they can or not. But uh, we, we definitely want to jump on uh, that timeline and be a leader, especially in Wisconsin and uh, I think this is great what John's doing and, and uh, Chairman Halleck and everybody else. So I just wanted to, to throw a few of those things out. So I had an opportunity 
to talk to the GAMI folks and, and all that and get a little more educated on what's going on. Well, I appreciate Thank all the help. Uh, Thank you. You've given Kevin. Yeah, you, you make a good point. It's really more than the engine. They want to make sure the fuel doesn't melt the fuel bladders and the wings and, um, you know, all the adhesives and mastics. And so it's a lot more difficult problem than what you would think. And these fuels are being made, but they're not, they're being made in small batches. And so there's a lot of pieces to come together, but uh, we want to be ready when, when everything is ready. And, um, you know, I think it's the right thing to do. Nobody likes pollution of any kind. And so we'll uh, move, move forward as best we can. Does, does this seem like the right idea? I mean, let me just go around the room and, and, and see if I can get some comments. Michelle, what are your thoughts? I think moving forward with this is perfect. So thank you for taking the lead. Okay. Any comments on the on the thought process? Um, I think like you're saying, you know, figuring out how much we need and what how we can change over the tanks as um, the fuel becomes more readily available and such is, um, you know, the direction to go. Other than that, I don't really have much more. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. I appreciate your comment. Mayor, your comments, your thoughts? Yeah, the excellent job. Let's go for, for this game, you know, just so we don't need the other one. So I think uh, let's keep it simpler. Great job. I think uh, great leadership. Let's make it happen. Maybe we could do it earlier, the better. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Burke, comments? Yeah, um, I'm also very supportive. I think given the logistics issue, it's almost a foregone conclusion. We're gonna need a third tank. I don't think we can just say, oh, we'll, we'll use up our UL, or I'm sorry, we'll use up our, our um, 100 low lead and just immediately switch over to uh, GAMI 100 because the answer is to begin with, um, the supply of, of the, the non-leaded fuel will be a little bit sporadic and, and un, unsure. But I think we do need to be a, an early adopter as, as I think you and Kevin both mentioned. I think we have to move forward. So it's really a matter of determining best guesses, what size tank do we need? And I think we're gonna need a third tank and so, uh, so that we can kind of run both of these fuels at the same time uh, until, until we have a, 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 a known supply of the non-leaded fuel coming in. And I guess real quick question, um, do we do we have room in the fuel depot for the third tank? Is that going to be a problem at all? Yeah, I've I, I've looked at it, and 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 uh, Rich and I have looked at it, and we did, Meet and Hunt did the last um, design, but we think we can put a second tank um, where the trucks are being parked right now within the fencing area, and then possibly move the um, move that that uh, parking area to another location. So. I mean, we have space to put it, what that configuration looks like. I really don't know. Like, does it go to the left or the right and et cetera that, but in that area, there is enough room. Sure. Um, and then the only, so again, very supportive of this, really happy this is all happening under our watch. Uh, and thank you for your leadership on this, John. I really appreciate it. Great, thank, thank you, Robert. Um, Luke, comments? Yes, um, the, the only thing I was gonna say or, or question was, is there any sort of incentives, and you may not know the answer to this, to be an early adopter in terms of helping offset the cost of the construction and ongoing maintenance of the infrastructure that will be required in order to accommodate this, either through the Bureau of Aeronautics or the FAA or some other third party uh, entity? Uh, I can certainly ask, um, if there's any incentive with regard to the infrastructure, infrastructure with regard with regard to the fuel, <clears throat> I really don't think so because yeah. California is, California is clamoring for the fuel, right? Because right. of their political landscape, <clears throat> and you know, so I mean, if we went and, and you know called George Braley tomorrow and says, "Look, we want four thousand gallons a month," I think we could get it. But the problem would be the cost would be so outrageous because of the trucking costs. Um, it doesn't make sense. Now we right. could get the 94 UL, 
<clears throat> and so I think if we're going to go for an intermediate solution, that's probably going to have to be it. But we're going to have to figure out the size of the tank um, to make sure it's you know we we want to meet the need, but we want to be fiscally responsible at right. the same time. And so we need to we need to do the work. Totally agree, and I agree, and, I, and I, I just want to echo what others have said in terms of the appreciation for obviously the the great amount of research that uh, you have done as part of this to present this to the commission as a whole. Yeah, well, uh, Kevin Munson has done a heck of a lot of it too, as, and, and thank you, Kevin, as well. Absolutely, yeah, he's he's, uh, he's he's helped me out quite a bit. Um, David, your comments. When. Uh, the general sentiment. I really appreciate all the hard work put into this. Um, I think it's a great solution moving forward. And um, I've been enthusiastically reading about it for quite some time now as well. And um, feel that you know everything that we are finding ourselves as as a commission simply continues to support what is being echoed out there in the industry. All right. Thank you, David. Kevin, any any closing comments? Um, sure. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. So, so a couple of quick things. It, it um, the there's a new F uh, FAA team uh, overseeing this. Uh, the past team, according to Gammy and other people, weren't as supportive as the new team. So that's good. Uh, the EPA is on board. So the way, the way I look at this is similar to World War II. The government jumps in and they mandate this, uh, this program goes through as far as logistics and producing this fuel and all that. So to answer Luke's question, yeah, uh, we may not get um, funding directly, but support indirectly to, to help expedite the logistics of all this. And that's what I see happening over the next few months. And and I think that's a gammy sentiments also. So, so the that, government will help the producers um, build the supply chain and the production capability, and and that will be the benefit that we we that we receive. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I have a question for both you, John and Kevin. Yeah. If if that's okay, John. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, is the infrastructure bill? Does there is there funding there? And with the COVID recovery. Uh, funding is there opportunity there uh, for deploying or acquiring the equipment that the tank and and the logistics that you've been describing is is are there funding sources there? I don't really know. Be honest with you. I mean, we'll have to find out what it is. And and as I one of the bullet points is secure funding. I mean, we'll leave no stone unturned um, and and try to find out. You know, maybe Josh has ideas. Maybe we can look at other areas, but I mean, you can count on, well, we'll, we'll, we'll we, we, there, no stone will be unturned <clears throat> and we'll, we'll find, we'll, if there's money there, we'll, we'll find it, you know, and just as a kind of a, as, as a pilot note, you know, I, I, I just bought a tail, tail wheel aircraft that can use the 94 UL and I'll pay a premium, you know, to put it in my airplane just because it's, uh, will contribute. So, so yeah, yes, you heard that right, a tailwheel airplane. Um, so the <laughs> I haven't gone to the other side, but I, I do participate. So <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so my action item between now and the next meeting is to go through the inventory of aircraft on the field um, to determine which ones can use which of the two fuels to figure out a quantity for each one and to try to contact the owner and see if they're willing at a premium to use the fuel. And then we could gauge that to determine the tank size and then um, get the engineering done. Hey, Make John, th this is Robert. Do you yeah, know, Robert. I mean, I don't know how you judge what a premium is, but if you're going to the um, other pilots, do you have in your mind, like, Tell me right off the top of your head, do you know what the, the, the price per gallon of 100 low lead is? Well, I, we do. And, and we do know that the, the Swift 94 UL um, is, is available um, uh, in Wanakee Airport. And, the, and there's, there is pockets of it, not necessarily in the quantity we would buy. Sure. And I think the, the, um, the price point we're seeing out there 
is uh, a dollar or more above the 100 low lead. Okay. So if you're buying 30 gallons of gas, you're going to pay 30 bucks more. Right. And that's what I wanted to find out. I mean, a premium, I can understand a premium, but if, if somebody says, okay, a gallon of gas that I put in my car is, I don't know, 329 or whatever it is. Yeah. And somebody says, you have to pay 1029. That's a big premium. If it's yeah. 429, you know, I, at least I, I kind of know what we're talking about. Yeah. So I, I think that, so based on, so that's what my expectations are, Robert. So here's where it really comes into play. <clears throat> it's like Gammy's plan A was to get the Emory Riddle, which uses a million gallons at two of its schools sure. as a launch pad for the fuel. Gammy balked at the, at the cost, or not, yeah, ban, excuse me, Emory Riddle balked at the cost. The people who is gonna get hurt the most, frankly, is Rich. Because if his planes can use this fuel, and it's a dollar more, that's $30 an hour or whatever, you know, whatever that number is. And what is burn rate is $15 an hour, 15 gallons an hour. It'll be at least $15 an hour more on his school costs that will have to be passed through. So sure. the guys like me that's going to buy 30, 40, 50 gallons, you know, a month or whatever we buy for our smaller planes, we're not going to feel the pain as much as somebody that's buying a lot of it, right? So sure. We'll have to see how all that shakes out. Um, okay, great. Thank, thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, the plan. If there's my, my whole goal is for the, the, the city of Middleton and the airport commission to be in a position to where um, we are doing everything reasonably, uh, reasonably that we can do. And no one can, can question um, that we aren't moving in the right direction and doing the right things. So, and I think this gets us in that position, if you will. Yeah, okay. and it sounds like we are all supportive of that. So let's keep moving forward. This is great. Okay, so next month we will um, give you our progress report. Here's a little thing about the fuel and kind of what's going on and um, you know, how it goes. So there's lots of information out there. You can just look on the web, um, Google, uh, read Hillview. But as we try to pass those things we come across, we'll try to pass them along. Next item up is the 2022 brush removal proposal. And so this comes back to Kara. Kara? Yep, I'm here. Sorry about that. I need to un okay. unmute. Okay, no sleeping. Yeah, no, that's just, I'm slow on the unmute button here. Okay. Um, all right, so it, I don't know, people have this been in the packet? Have people seen this already? I'll let you no. walk through it. Okay, I'm gonna walk through it then. All right, so I'm just gonna read it. Um, the but North it, Fork. Kara, it has been in the packet, just to okay. clarify, it has been in the packet, but you're welcome to go through it. I'm just, to answer the question, it's been in the packet. It's been in the packet, so they can see that, okay. Um, Basically, I think I actually will read it in, in for those who may have just glanced at it more cursory. But the North Fork of Branch Creek is what runs through our, our airport. Um, these waterways right now are in the process of being cleared of the brush. The brush clearing of these waterways is desirable and that doing so allows the drainage of the airport to function as designed. Brush clearing also limits the cover that large wildlife such as deer could use. So in the past, we've simply ignored the brush growth until we had it mechanically removed. This is an expensive process. The reduction of flow during large rain events has resulted in some areas being silted in, which will result in additional expense to remediate. The goal as I see it is to use a variety of means to remove the overgrowth, then through go uh, ongoing goat grazing, burning, and when necessary mechanical means, maintains a waterway free of woody growth. The removal and replacement of invasive plant species with native prairie plants will make maintaining the waterways easier. So proposed for 2022, two days rental of the forestry moor from McFarland's in, in Sauk City to be accomplished in the spring or fall, depending on when the area dries sufficiently, and that's $1,800. The waterway burned by either staff or by the city, this has been budgeted in the previous year, which did not occur. Spring would be ideal, but again, fall will work depending on the conditions. That's $2,500. 
Goat grazing is with Vegetation Solutions out of Richland Center in late spring or early summer. Uh, that's the start, uh, $3,500. And then seeding of prairie plants. The costs aren't known at this time and the timeline as to when seeding should be accomplished has not been established. Adaptive restoration it, it works in conjunction with the city and that's who we began conversations with as well. <clears throat> For, the forestry mower will be used to mechanically remove most, if not all the remaining woody growth left and or regrown after this summer's brush removal. Burning will help suppress emergent brush and remove existing buildup of grass and wood. It is possible that airport staff and volunteers will be able to do the controlled burn or do the controlled burning that it requires. Goats will remove and or stress new woody growth and allow the banks to be open for the eventual planting of native prairie species. An established native prairie along the banks of the North Fork will suppress growth from the brush. Future annual, bur annual burning and grazing with mechanical brush removal supplementing will allow the waterways to remain clear of brush in a more sustainable manner that's simply attempting to forestry mow every five to seven years. Is that the completion yeah. of that, Mark? Yeah. All right, so that, yes. that completes the report as Rich has written it. Um, I can add some things in a bit, but are there any questions so far that I might be able to field? Yeah, my, my question is, there, we're in the process of getting it into shape. And then there's a, a maintenance. I mean, I'm hoping these numbers drop because at some point in time, it's cheaper to let it grow up and then to hit it down in five or six years than it is to maintain it. Yeah, so the, the McFarland's portion of it, what we're doing right now is we've been taking down the woody growth, the tall trees that you see, um, any, they're five to 10 years old. And this is a big intensive process. And unfortunately they didn't complete everything that we wanted them to in, in this previous spring's work. And the mulching was not to the degree that we wanted it to. They needed to take it further to the ground. So that will be part of the instruction to them. But that 1800, we will not need to use a forestry mulcher once this progressive process over this two to three years is complete. So that can be eliminated. The, um, the ongoing maintenance would be the mowing provided either by the local farmer and the airport staff the manual clearing of stuff that the mowers, the mowers can't reach, and then um, goat grazing and hand cutting for the things that even the mowers can't um, address. That cost for maintenance is a lot less. Right now we're doing some very intensive work. Again, the unknown part that is gonna be more of an additional cost, but it's kind of a one-time thing that you start doing is the seeding of the prairie plants. My understanding is that that's not an inexpensive uh, adventure when you do it, but once that is established, then it maintains itself and is um, much more sustainable for providing the drainage as opposed to clogging the waterways and backing things up. One thing that I will provide next time regarding this is I want people to see some of the photos of what we have existing, of like how blocked these waterways are, and that gives us an indication of why we're flooding, why we're backing up into the farm, I have worked with the airport staff to clear a small section so that you can actually see what's possible and the flow through it, um, which is beautiful, frankly, but I will have that prepared for, for next month so we can see that. Okay, a, a question to the city uh, folk. Is there, is there money in the DNR and from all these other people on waterway maintenance and clearance? Are there funds to be had outside of the airport? But this because this is something that impacts much, much greater than, I mean, we're doing this for the benefit of everyone. Correct. So, I mean, are there any other pockets in the pants somewhere? I'd be happy to check with our public lands department. They would be the experts in that. Um, actually, they're now called Parks and Rec. I keep forgetting the name change. Uh, so Matt Amundsen, our, our Parks and Rec director, I can, I'll talk with him about it, John. Um, yeah. And Mark Wagner, our city forester, would know those sources as well. Yeah, um, I think we should apply for them because, I mean, I think we're, we're doing our part here. And if we could defer some of the costs, that would be a fabulous thing. I could also check with our sustainability coordinator, uh, Kelly Hilliard. I'll check with those three. 
So, I mean, Luke and Luke, Luke and Robert, you guys are probably on some of these committees, right? I'm not on those committees, but no, um, I'll support I'll support you know talking it up in different areas because I agree if there's if we're helping more than just the airport, which we are, yeah. maybe there could be a little at least cost sharing if if not, you know, just additional funds in general. The other group I would think about, Mark, is the um, Dane County Water Resources Commission. Um, we've yes. been we've been working with them on some stormwater issues related to my neighborhood. Um, and uh, they so they've been actively in, involved there. I, I don't again, I don't know if they have funds available, um, but might be able to at least be aware of anything uh, that exists. Yeah, we're not looking for huge amounts here, but I mean, any contribution uh, certainly goes uh, goes a long way. We're talking in the we're talking in the thousands, not tens of thousands. So that, that should be something that somebody can slip in. And of course, uh, our, our mayor will support all this and leave no stone unturned for funding, right, Mayor? We'll say yes. Okay, Cara, go ahead. All right, Mark, can you expand that first picture at the top there that I sent you? Is that possible to get it enlarged? Um, I didn't save it. Uh, I'd have, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can. Visible, Cara. It is pretty visible, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. I can I can do it if you'd like me to. I just have to, would have to save it and blow it up. You, uh, could just, you could also just expand it on the screen, like the whole, if you can zoom in on the whole page. I'm not able to in this case, because it's just an email. She just sent it to me right before the meeting. Okay, uh, we can we, see it fine. Okay. We can be fine. Actually, okay, maybe fine. I'll, I'll do it this way. Let me reply. Oh, there we go. I reply. Excellent. How's that? That's great. So what you're seeing is a view to the south southeast um, behind the hangars on Alpha looking towards Airport Road and Airport Road runs behind those trees and there's where the bridge is. So yeah. that tall growth you're seeing is the growth of like the last seven to 10 years that is on the creek bank. Some of it's in the water and that has been the tricky part that we need to get to that's been inaccessible. What you're seeing in front that's about five feet tall is the regrowth from after the McFarland's um, forestry mulching they did in late March, early April. So it, it gives you a sense of how aggressive wow. in particular the willows are in just filling whatever they can, including into the waterway itself. So that was day one. You can see the electric fence we have set up there. And if you can do the same thing on the next picture, Mark, it'll show one week later This gives you an example of what the goats do. That's one of the 18 that are here. But if you look, those willows have been completely denuded. It is now revealed what uh, we found on the bottom that McFarland's actually didn't grind to the ground that we were expecting. But you can actually see, this is before I've done any hand cutting, now into the creek, which is down below, down there exactly. And they, at this point, they hadn't had access to the other side yet. So that's how thick the other side is. And on the other side of that brush is the fence to the bike pathway and then the dog park. Can you take any, any uh, so it gives you a sense other of other how we can not access to get in by hand. Can you take something like on a um, bobcat? Say again? Can you take like a bobcat brush hog or something on track and go in there and tear all this out or what? Yes, exactly. So, so that's <laughs> partly what we can do too. So what we're doing is getting down into the sections where it's leaning over into the creek and that's more where we're doing hand cutting. So this stuff we can all do now mechanically with, with machines. Um, and then some of these we're just gonna have to chainsaw down. So this weekend is gonna be our first time we're able to get into the trees to chainsaw some of it. The goats will clean it up, it makes it easier to cut up and have other volunteers either remove it on their own for firewood or um, it can be, we'll either have it mulched, chipped or, or burned. That could be part of the burn process as we burn the banks hopefully this fall when the conditions are right. I've got a, uh, I've got a brush hog that fits on the front of a bobcat that can take up to two inches. If you've got a bobcat with a high flow and a bobtatch on the front, I'm more than willing to get it out to the airport so you guys can hook it up to a machine. I don't have a track machine, 
But if, if I had a track machine, I'd bring it all out to you. Yeah, that would be awesome. It, some of the banks are stay relatively damp near the edge. So obviously where, um, where that can go, but we would love any options like that, John. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I, I might talk see. to the Bobcat of Madison. Maybe I can get the owner to I donate can see it. for a couple of days. I can see it now, John, you and your helicopter dropping in the equipment. I know. I told then, the guy that at Golan's Fisheries, if he didn't deliver my minnows, I was going to scoop out with a bucket and take them on my own. He said <laughs> if I did, he could have, he'd be glad to give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cara, I also have the video. Do you want to show that? Yeah. So basically, I have some videos, but just for the purpose of this meeting, um, and particularly because Rich is not here yet, I was mistaken. This is his first attempt at trying to do a video. But can you hear it? Yes, we can. Who's talking? Airport, Maury Field with the Goat Squad doing their job. Clearing off the willows. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's his first little view. What you missed at the end is um, he very creatively got the back end of the goat fertilizing. And uh, <laughs> that was a big oops. <laughs> well, what goes in must come out. It must come out. So the other thing is our neighbor farmer is very happy that we're getting some natural fertilization for what uh, is on his hay field. <laughs> very I, nice. That is actually a question I had too, is whether that is a problem with uh, contaminating the creek. I, I don't mean to be a, a downer about it, but I'm wondering whether that's a, right. an issue. I'm glad you asked that because the answer is no, because they are terrified of water. It took me a lot to get them across the bridge. They stay away from it. And um, it's back in, in the fields, like where the deer and all the other animals um, do natural fertilization. So they do a really good job at, at keeping it right where they leave it and they don't leave it near the water. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And actually, in answer to the question, the bigger problem is the fact that this backs up into the farm fields when this is when we have bigger floods, and that brings everything out in in that right. area down into the creek. So this is minor compared to what we get coming in from our northern neighbors. Well, it looks like we're going in the right direction, and hopefully, once we get it done, <clears throat> you know, it'll be done. Now, last year, McFarland. <clears throat> didn't bill us for the $1,800 that I'm aware of because yeah, I, I asked the city to send them a, um, uh, a letter of donation that they could take out of their taxes. Maybe they'll right. donate it again this year if they can see it as a charitable contribution. Yep. And use it as a marketing opportunity for them as well. Yeah. Um, they're, the goats are now in, we've expanded this section just so people know we're now working on one of the kind of silted in drainage areas, the very first one along the taxiway. Yeah. Um, they'll be there now for a couple of weeks while we are cutting down some of this. And then this should be a lot cleared out. So basically the equipment can come in and then very quickly uh, remove the rest. We have two more areas we're moving them to a little, a little further down where the heavily silted in drainage areas where there's three um, channels underneath the runway. And I, I also would make a plea for looking to the DNR for ways we can restore the waterways to where they were uh, originally designed. We discovered at least one of the three channels is completely blocked at the other end. So again, no wonder we're having troubles with backing up. And then our final area is over by the, the pond area on the western side of the airport that is um, very thickened as well. So that'll be the final area that we, we move them to. The first area we used last year as a trial over by the car dealership was so good that there is no need for goats down there again. We've been able to get in there with the mowers and then a little burning will be fine. And that area was a complete success. So we don't ever have to do it again. So chair, that's an example of what can happen when you do it right it's minimal maintenance than once it's um, addressed. Well, that's what we're looking for. Commissioners, do you, any of you have any questions, a car that you'd like to ask? I think this is a good job, very creative, and I think uh, looks good. Thank you. We've been working hard. <laughs> yeah, good, well, it's got a good, we have a plan. We have, uh, 
costs. We know we can uh, we can swallow the costs, and hopefully we can uh, look for some additional pockets um, to defer. You know, and so all good. I think we're working in the move direction. John, John, can we agree as a group that these this management practice and what Cara has brought to this with Rich is really one of the greatest of all time <laughs> practices at the airport? Uh, I just have to say, uh, Mark, that that was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would I be love it. the greatest of all time. Yeah. You guys are great. And really, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for being supportive of innovation and being environmentally friendly. I really, you know, we couldn't do it without the airport commission's support. So thank you. Thank you for the goat of all time. Okay. <laughs> a goat of all time. I, I started right. learning that term in the last year or two and I heard it during the Olympics a lot, you know, with yeah. uh, gymnasts. So that's right. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Thank you, Cara. Everybody. You're welcome. Next, next item, Mark, what do we have? I think that was, well, let's see here. I think we just had- um, Future events. Uh, yeah. Future events, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, like I said, we didn't get, um, any you know more information from uh, Capital Flight? I'm sure that they will provide it. We will do it next time, and we'll also give them an opportunity to talk about their uh, car event, which I understand uh, was stellar. Um, and so that's great. We're bringing the public to the airport, which we should be, and uh, we're we're hosting events, and and uh, I think we're we're all going in the right direction. So. Um, we will let uh, Capital Flight talk about that and make their request for next year at the, the next meeting. Um, any other topics that we haven't covered that we should be thinking about covering or get on the agenda? What do we need to do that we are doing that we need to do? John, I don't know if it's necessarily um, uh, appropriate or, or designed or, or eager for the rest of the commission, but um, there is an upcoming survey that's going to be uh, distributed by the city of Middleton or as it relates to the airport um, and apologies um, and the reporting on it in particularly some of the local publications has been pretty um, uh, far off in terms of actual facts. And so I don't know if it makes sense for us to spend some time uh, walking through the intricacies in this commission or leave it entirely up to the city council. Okay, so so I'm I'm gonna make sure I, sure I understand what you said. I, I would caution you not to engage in debate about anything. Um, I, I just would caution you just to list it if that's a concern, just to list it and then not debate it. Just, yeah, okay. I, I think of just just a, a public forum to to kind of uh, mention or walk through the intricacies of the of the the survey itself. It sounds like he's asking for an update on the city's approach on how it's going to conduct the community survey. It sounds like that's what Luke is asking. For. Okay, well, right? I don't really know much about the city survey. So right. if you give me an opportunity to digest it between now and the next meeting, we'll try to figure out if it's appropriate for the AC and, and how we might approach it. Would that be okay, Luke? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll make a note of that and take a look at it. And if it's something that we could uh, reasonably do that adds value uh, to the airport and the community, we'll, we'll do that. Is there anything else that we might want to consider uh, for the next time? No, really, really interested to have the follow-up though on the plan to migrate from leaded to unleaded fuel. So I think that's, that's really, really exciting to me. So looking forward to that next month. We will, uh, we will uh, move as crisply as we can within the confines of, you know, getting the information and, and all the things we have to do, but we will definitely be making forward progress Great. Uh, at all times. Great. Okay. And I agree with Robert. That's really the right thing to do. And John and Kevin doing, that's really good. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, so next time when we go through, we will um, once again, um, take a look, keep track of our finances. Uh, we'll keep track of our projects. Um, uh, we will review our, our fuel migration plan um, to mitigate uh, lead and other pollutants if we can to the environment. Um, we'll manage our, our, our uh, uh, bank and uh, stream 
um, brush management, and then we'll take a look at future events. So we will have those available uh, and, uh, and, you know, as rolling topics, if you will. Okay, so uh, if there's no other comments, then would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? This is this is Robert, and I will make a motion to adjourn, but just uh, Mark Opitz, for the record, I actually came in and voted at the approval of the minutes. So when you make your notes for the minutes for next time, I, I, I was here in time to vote for the, the minutes of August 5th. Um, so thank you. And with that comment, uh, I would make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Okay. okay, second it. Okay, so we have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, sounds like the airport commission is officially closed for tonight. Great. Great. Thank you all. <laughs>